Welcome to the Windows channel and this is a quick look at the latest build of Windows 10, the Creators Update. Um, only three days after the release of 15,002, we are now at 15,007. So it seems that they've uh, wanted to really release uh, build really fast. And I'm really happy because it fixes every glitch that I had with this. Now, um, install went super well, no problems and upgraded with no issues. 45 minutes, which is typical time for this computer. And um, after that, I had my, you know, I, I was hoping that it fixes a lot of things and it does. It fixes every issue that I had actually with the uh, Insider uh, preview. So uh, that is something very welcome uh, because I was uh, a little sad to have a broken Insider machine. And uh, so my, you know, Action Center works perfectly well now. I can really do what I want. Uh, my start menu and everything is great. So this build, uh, of course, has all the features of 15,002 that you can see in my review of that build. But what is new in here? Apart from bug fixes, because, I mean, if you had issues, this build you should try. Uh, it fixes a lot. It fixes all my issues. But be warned, there's a really big list of things that are broken in this build. So um, that could be something to just uh, think about because um, this is uh, uh, a possibility. Um, and, you know, for now, it fixes most of what I have. So uh, basically, uh, that's, uh, you know, having a build as an insider. What's new exactly in here? Is there anything new since, you know, it's been only three days? Yeah, there's a few things. So, uh, first of all, in the Microsoft Edge browser, there are some uh, new improvements. So, of course, we had the, you know, set aside tabs on the upper left corner. And when you click there, well, your tabs that set aside were there. Interesting, you now have three dots. You can actually share the tabs. So, that's interesting. If, you know, I could see this use being very useful if you are working on projects where you need to share web page information between uh, different people. This is actually, I think, a good thing. Also, one of the big improvements in Edge is when you go to the import from another browser, um, you know, it was limited. Now, not only can you import from your favorite browser like Firefox, Chrome, and Internet Explorer, you can also import from file or export to a file. That means now you can actually export Edge uh, favorites to another browser by exporting to a file. That's a cool and very, very useful feature that I'm happy that they had it. Um, it also adds more when you actually um, use the importing from um, Edge. Basically, you import more. Before, it was just uh, f the um, um, the favorites, but now it's the browsing history and the safe passwords and all, all, all of the other data that the browser might have in one step. That is actually very nice. When you download a file, you now can run. A lot of people complain about this thing. Hey, you know what? Since the anniversary update, what I hate is that on Edge, I have to save it before I run it. Now you can run it without saving it on your PC. So they brought that back. A lot of people wanted to have that. And you know, it's a feature that I use a lot because you download something, you often, you know, you don't want it to save it. You just want to run what you've downloaded and then it's over. Uh, web notes improvements. So uh, there's all sorts of new little improvements in uh, the, uh, uh, the notes when you want to take notes. So here it says it can take you to the page right now. But uh, anyways, when it does work, uh, here it goes. Uh, here it goes. So there, there's a little glitch here that I've seen. Uh, web notes are uh, improved. So, uh, but you see there's a little, a few bugs, so web notes could actually crash. Uh, so that's also um, a little bit more of improvements in the web notes uh, side of uh, in Edge, which is, for me, a, a big feature. That's a pretty, pretty big feature, basically. So uh, I think that that is a, a welcome, uh, a welcome um, feature that, you know, they're working on all the time. 
Um, apps for websites are now slowly coming because you know we had um, apps that could actually be uh, in, in the features they could um, you, you could see that you know you can open something from the internet directly from an, uh, to an app but there was no list and there was nothing in there now they're starting to work on that uh, coming soon of course in the build the uh, introduced in 15002 the new team setting page in the settings app uh, and uh, so in the settings app you will now also slowly have in the teams here that you see on the left um, so custom teams but you'll have teams that you'll be able to download from uh, the store eventually very soon so that's pretty cool um, and they're working on it so it's soon to be released as a feature and uh, I'm looking forward to that. I think it's going to be nice. Cortana. Cortana can now pick up where you left off on different Rest. things. I can't hear you. So basically, uh, if you're using Windows 10 on another machine and that you are uh, going to basically go to another machine using Windows 10, well, you will now have Cortana tell you, hey, you want to pick up where you left off in Word and PowerPoint, or uh, if you have cloud-based documents and stuff like that, the Action Center will actually show you and tell you, oh, uh, you've got some stuff here if you want to continue working on those. So that's nice, you know, it uh, provides kind of a seamless experience between different uh, Windows 10 computers. Uh, I like the, the, the sync capabilities of Windows 10. I, 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 think, I think it's really cool because every PC customizes to pretty much the way you want it all the time automatically and that is something I like. In the uh, store they've improved now when there's a progress bar when you buy a, uh, an app or download something they've uh, fiddled with the uh, progress bar a little uh, trying to make it a little uh, better and it's telling you a little more real-time information about downloads. Uh, a few things in the settings also that I've noticed one is new holographic environment audio safety here. That's kind of interesting. And uh, also in the settings, we have a, uh, and all the Universal Windows apps, by the way, uh, a new way of scrolling. A lot of people are complaining. So now you have this tin bar here, but if you put your mouse pointer, it becomes a full scrolling bar. Uh, so this is a, what a lot of people wanted also to have. It's pretty cool, uh, you know, slowly tweaking here and there on the different uh, options of um, Windows 10. Windows Hello uh, enrollment improvements. There's all sorts of little improvements with Hello if you have a device that's compatible. Um, Microsoft continued dedication, dedication to diversity brings the rainbow flag uh, from the emoji front and keyboard. Uh, there's a new, uh, there will be new Bluetooth APIs, PC and mobile. This is the first build you can try out new APIs and enable the GAT server Bluetooth LE peripheral role and unpaired Bluetooth LE device connectivity. Uh, keyboard navigation improvements uh, for the snipping tool. You can now take a screen capture using only your keyboard, um, pressing Alt N, uh, select the desired snip type and press Enter. So uh, when you actually do Alt N, you are supposed to have this um, with the snipple to snipping tool, this new option available. Uh, there's a lot of fixes in this build, and uh, of course I see them because I have a lot more uh, uh, usability of this build, uh, basically 1507. They fixed uh, tearing off a tab in Microsoft Edge using mouse would do a green screen of that. They fixed issues where going to battery settings uh, via the settings app crashed the app. Fixed an issue where virtual touchpad was no longer missing from taskbar. Fixed issues touch keyboard. They fixed an issue where Windows Hello was giving a couldn't turn on camera. Fixed issue where remote desktop connections might, might unexpectedly fail. Fixed issue that could result in a quick action section being missing from Action Center. Uh, yeah, typically there were, I had all sorts of weird things happening here, and that's all fixed. Fixed issue where uh, Surface Pen clicks might not work after cycling Bluetooth off, uh, off and on. 
Fixed issue where the data usage space and settings did not load, updated virtual touchpad to be a little bigger, and fixed issue resulting in Netflix not showing what you wanted but the black screen instead of the content. Tons of little problems here. Uh, after updating to this build, non-stop exception in the Spectrum.exe service may occur, causing PCs to lose audio, disk I.O. usage to become very high, and apps like Microsoft Edge to become unresponsive. So be warned, that can be a problem. Investigating a certain situation where PCs might bug check green screen of that during installation of the new build. Didn't happen to me. Uh, clicking When clicking certain elements in desktop, in the Win32 games, the game minimizes and cannot be restored. Desktop shortcuts containing a percentage character, usually URL shortcuts, will result in a cyclical explorer crash. Uh, when projecting to a secondary monitor, there might be a hang. I am right now and I do not have a hang and I did not have a hang until now. So let's cross our fingers that that's maybe not too bad. Of course, you saw the holographic entry and settings page. Brightness changes made via settings system display will unexpectedly revert to uh, revert after closing the settings app. List of apps in Surface Dial if you have uh, Dial, um, <clears throat> bring us settings may um, be empty. Task bar preview icons unexpectedly small in IDPI settings. Quicken will fail to run with an error message. <coughs> there is a fix with the registry editor if you want to fix that. Uh, control C to copy and command prompt won't work. Some websites in Edge might unexpectedly show we can't reach this page. Dragging apps from the all apps list to pin on the start tile grid won't work. But you can use it with right click. Certain hardwares, uh, from, uh, for example Acer Aspire, the Netflix app crashes. Third party universal Windows platform could crash on devices with 100% or more settings like I am using here on this screen. <coughs> Sorry guys, Microsoft Edge with uh, Narrator might have no items in view. And saying hey Cortana play on doesn't work immediately. Uh, might have to wait five minutes before it actually begins to work uh, after it crashes. So that's pretty much what we have here. Uh, nice build, works great. I've had a lot of fun in the few hours that I've used it. And uh, for those that are waiting for the image file, they've released today 15,002 as an ISO. Why don't you go get that? If you want to upgrade, uh, you'll be able to go directly to 15,002. And from there, you'll jump to 15,007 that was released yesterday. If you enjoy my videos, please subscribe, give us a thumbs up. If you have any comments, questions, suggestions, let us know. And I hope you enjoy your videos.